Hello there, Ray here, and we have a brand new 1.20 snapshot. This is 23W18A, and it comes with some big changes on the way players move. Let's get into that and more, so make sure you guys are subscribed and leave a like. They added in a brand new advancement. All you need is a chiseled bookshelf and a comparator to read the output of that, and you will get the power of books. And this will complete an advancement for the adventure tab. They made a quality of life update for the smithing templates when using the smithing table. Before you'd always have to put the template in first before you're able to place in the other two items. But now you can shift click any of the other items in prior to the actual template, which is a bit easier. Because jukeboxes produce unique redstone signals with comparators, they have also been added here to the redstone tab in the creative menu. I'm glad this is added because every time I wanted to mess with one, I always have to try to hunt it down in the function tab. For those of you guys that like to live on the edge and actually walk on the edge of blocks, you'll now also get the noise of stepping on the blocks beside you. This wasn't the case before because it used to calculate where you were walking based off the very center of you, even if your feet are on the edge. And if you're walking in water, it will also produce footsteps but at a lower volume and pitch. This bug was in the game since 1.4 or 2012, so what the player is stepping on is no longer detected by the center of the player. It actually affects quite a few different things. So now the tricks were used to walk on the side of like a slime block, so you wouldn't get the slowness of slime. You can see that no longer works, because even if a little bit of the player is touching it, you still move very slow. So this trick pretty much been fixed for everything, so like honey walking on the edge, walking on the edge of soul sense, so you can avoid the slowness, especially when navigating the nether dimension. You see speedrunners use this a lot, walking on the edge of ice to avoid the slipperiness which could affect parkour players but also affects the player falling from a height and just clipping on the edge of it now you can see we actually get the bounciness or we can also get the fall reduction of things like powder snow landing on the edge of hay or if you happen to walk on the edge of redstone they'll still activate and if you fall on wool you don't activate nearby skulk sensors or shriekers which will help you in the deep dark biomes so there are some pros and cons to this bug being fixed what do you think about this change you think it's more positive or more negative this change could actually affect a lot more, so let me know if there's something else this might change. It was also fixed so the transitioning between wool and carpet no longer activates skulk sensors. And jump boost didn't actually work on slime or honey, so let's go ahead and try it now. We bounce on this. Oh wow, yeah, we get the bounciness. And then if you're in honey, normally you can barely jump. And now we can actually jump decently. So much so we can actually jump up one. With the new advancement added in, they also came in and did some changes to triggers, which are things the game look for in order to activate things such as advancements. So with this, they're able to detect things like you placing the comparator in front of the bookshelf. It can tell exactly what player placed it, the position the block is placed, because you can have the comparator facing a certain direction to actually read it, the block state, the actual detail of the blocks, and the block that the player is actually holding or using. So if you're looking to make your own advancements, they also have an example here showing what you need to do before and with the new changes afterwards. Loot tables also have a any of, which is used in loot table conditions. And they also add a all of, so all the conditions have to be passed in order for it to work. They added in a few new things for telemetry. This is data that Mojang collects while you are playing the game. And in the past, this has been controversial as some things you weren't able to opt out of. And people kind of seen it as Microsoft spying on you as you're playing Minecraft. So let's see what they added in this time. So they added something called All Events, which now has a new property of a launcher name, so they can keep track of if you're playing on the actual official Minecraft launcher or if you're playing on a third-party launcher. They said they're collecting this information for troubleshooting bugs related to the game launcher itself. They also made changes in the updated required events under World Loader, where they're able to collect information about what type of worlds you're loading into. And they said they're doing this so they can understand how Java Realms players interact with adventure as well as minimap content. For the new optional events category, they got advancements made. This keeps track of what advancements players actually accomplish and the actual time that they achieve these accomplishments. And the reason they're collecting this is to understand how players are progressing and what's limiting players, which will help them inform their game design. This is actually quite interesting one because there's probably not a lot of information about how far people progress in Minecraft before like starting a new world. I wonder about this as well. When I design my farms, if I should design them for more end game or early game, obviously more people would reach early game and that's why I designed them to be simple, easy, while also being productive enough so it could be helpful all the way to the end game. But let me know how far you guys normally make it into a Minecraft game. They also have one called Game Load Times, which will keep track of how fast it takes for your client to load up. And they are collecting this information to keep track of how well their clients are loading for people. It doesn't seem to include how long people's worlds load, just starting up the Minecraft game client. So in game, if you go to telemetry data, 
you can see exactly what data is required and all the different things that they're actually collecting. Here's also one about world unloaded, which is also required. And you can click open my data, which will send you right to the logs where it keeps track of all this information if you wanna take a look at it. What do you think about Microsoft collecting all this information about you? With the introduction of camos, they made it so that the mob's hitbox will actually change as they are sitting down. But initially, this wasn't applying to sniffers that were sniffing out stuff and dropping to the ground to dig it up. But now this actually changes. When they sit down, they are slightly shorter than when they are standing up. So if you want to, you can actually detect when the sniffer goes down to dig up just by using some tripwire. They also made it so the sniffer will actually show what particle it's digging from rather than what particle it's actually sitting on. So here it was showing the bedrock block because it was sitting on one and it should have been showing the grass block. Sniffers will also not continue to sniff out a block and dig a seed out of it if the block itself was removed. They also resolve the outside flickering of the compass when in a non-natural dimension when it's spinning about. And they fixed some other problems like in some cases the bundle wasn't showing if there was items inside of it. In the recent snapshot, the FPS hasn't been very good, so now it's better like before. You also won't get an insane amount of lag just for filling an area all the way down into the void. And they resolved another issue to do with light updating, so it will cross chunks better now. The Bedrock Edition also got their beta and preview, where they fixed a bunch of different bugs related to 1.20, including accessibility, amethyst resonance, audio, blocks, pitcher plant, sniffer eggs, torch, flowers, calibrated skulk sensor, experience orbs, Gameplay, brush, music, and also general graphics, sniffer, skulk sensors, touch controls, and user interfaces and vanilla parody, as well as a bunch of other technical and experimental features for add on and script engine, and a bunch of changes to their API, with the final things being items and scripting. Now, join me in exploring these new changes over at my Twitch livestream, where you guys can even play along with me. Or keep up with all the latest 1.20 news with this playlist here, or this other one about real glitches and tricks I found over the course of these last few months. We're getting so close to 370 subscribers, so make sure you guys hit the button, and I will see you at my live stream. Bye bye!